It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us for a post Fourth of July freedom episode of Theology of the Body, Cindy Black, our executive director here, and Catherine Yanko. Thank you both for stopping in. Thank you, Kyle. I'm excited about this because I think I have some ideas of where this is going, but also. I think I'm going to learn a lot from this, too. Freedom and theology of the body. What's the connection? Well, really, it comes down to, you know, we've talked about theology of the body is that gift of self. It's dependent on freedom. Mm -hmm. That love itself is dependent on freedom. You have to be able to freely choose to love or freely choose the good. And being made in the image and likeness of God comes with that sense of freedom. Like, he shares his freedom of expression with us Mm -hmm. the way he created us in that freedom and just like the quotes that people were posting when we think of freedom as just doing whatever we want whenever we want that's such a limited notion of freedom and that can actually lead to enslavement Mm -hmm. if we're not choosing the good and that when we do choose the good that is exercising in our freedom in a way that actually increases our freedom then, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So can you give an example of maybe someone who might think that they are free but is actually enslaved, maybe kind of a a distorted view of what freedom is? Well, a personal example is when my teens wanted more and more freedom I think my son dreams of moving out so that he can be free. Uh He's thinking of it as I can come and go as I please and not have these rules that constrain me. But Mm -hmm. those of us who have been in that situation know that he's actually more free now because he's not responsible for all the bills, all the, you know, everything else. So I think that that's that's one example. I don't know if you have an example. I think... The easiest one for me to see it is more so in a negative example. So like an example where the opposite is at work. So if I maybe tell one of my friends or maybe one of my parents some sort of white lie about where I'm going or something that I'm doing and slowly and slowly it just keeps building and building and it's this huge circle of trying to back up the lie and then you can see it starts to involve like your other friends or your siblings or something like that and after that you're enslaved to this lie Mm -hmm. rather than like an ability to just keep going with whatever you're doing one of the things that was quoted a bunch yesterday is the saint pope john paul the second quote freedom consists in not doing what we like but having the right to do what we ought So this kind of fits in with religious freedom. And does that also fit in with theology of the body? Is this a connection here? Absolutely. And really, John Paul II really connected the notion of freedom with truth. That without truth, freedom is false or illusory. And then if we think, if we take that a step further and apply it to Jesus' words, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. And then he says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. That freedom comes precisely in Christ. That that's ultimately where we have our access to freedom. Jesus loved freely. He gave his life freely for the sake of each of us that then we are called also, and that's what Theology of the Body goes back to, we are called also to love freely as self-gift, to lay down our lives for the other, for others in our lives. The more fully we're living that, the more human we are and the more we are who we were created to be. I love that you brought up the verse from Galatians, that for freedom Christ has set us free, because it kind of goes back to the point you were making in the beginning. In moral theology, a lot of the times we distinguish between license, and that's just like a term to describe that phenomenon of, like you were saying, your son, I can do whatever like I want kind of thing, versus a freedom that's my ability to do what is fulfilling for myself. And that gets tied in with the truth and the good for us. But with that verse, if you put the idea of license for the ability to do whatever I want, Christ has set me free. That just sounds so wrong and <laughs> awkward. And that's it's like obvious it's, when you say yeah, it like that. Yeah. It's it'd be so weird for that to be the reality. And I think that for me that kind of shows that's scripture. So it's obviously really important. It's inspired. It's the word of God. Christ has set us free to 
be fulfilled and to the, do the most amount of good and the light of truth that we can. Well, and I think that concept of to doing what fulfills us, that could be a place that we're not always clear on what fulfills a person or what they perceive to be fulfilling them. So somebody might think it fulfills me to go out and have one night stands or something like that. Whereas that's a misrepresentation or a misunderstanding of the truth of what is going to fulfill a person. And, you know, in preparing for today, I read a work by Cardinal Dulles who was reflecting on St. John Paul II's notion of freedom. And he says, if my motives could never transcend my individual self-interest or the collective self-interest of my group, I could never be truly free. I could always be manipulated and compelled to act in specific ways by fear of punishment or hope of reward. Hmm. So much of what we do, so many of my choices that I make in the course of the day are out of like self-interest or the interest of the people that I want to see most happy. That actually can be a form that enslaves me to choose based on that rather than the good, the overall good. Yeah, It's an interesting concept. Then I can be manipulated to, which is less free when you're manipulated. In the audiences 15 and 16 in Theology of the Body, John Paul II talks uh, more about his idea of freedom, which seems sort of unique, I think, to the modern culture. Um, And he actually says that the innermost part of freedom is freedom of the gift. Um, So it's my ability to make a gift of myself. And he says that because it is only like gift and self-gift that can be the foundation of love. And then it's only love that can be fulfilling and set us free, Mm. which I think to apply that so much to maybe some of the ideas that were thrown around yesterday in the backyard barbecues um, where political talk just seems to boil. (laughs) I think that's just mind-blowing that he would say something like that. Uh, The very foundation, the innermost kind of parts of it is about self-giving and not about what I can get for myself. Yeah. And I think as we're trying to seek God's will, sometimes we can think of God's will for us as already set. You know, I'll hear people, they have a life change, they'll say, well, that was God's will, or if they, mm-hmm. they're they trying to figure out what God's will is for their vocation and things like that. God has given us that freedom that he hasn't prescribed everything in advance, like this one path, that to be truly free is to choose the good. That comes from the person that he created us to be with our particular gifts and our particular desires. So I think that we are invited to exercise that freedom and align it with his, but it's not like a set, like it's already been determined. We are joined for Theology of the Body Thursday by Catherine Yanko and Cindy Black, talking about freedom and what that has to do with Theology of the Body. And I think one of the things that keeps jumping out to me in this discussion is the importance of truth and understanding truth. And you mentioned, Cindy, that the truth is what sets us free. And it's whenever we are accepting lies, which would be the opposite of truth, about what our freedom means... That's whenever we might think that we're free, but we're ultimately falling into that slavery that you're talking about. So I I guess part of it is educating ourselves and others, and that's the point of evangelism, of the truth, of God's love. What are some of the things that you think people might fall into of misunderstanding truth, of freedom, of love, and how we can maybe help to be shed light on the truth well i think we have a great example in the rich young man he approaches jesus and says what must i do to have eternal life Uh and life to the full and jesus says keep my commandments oh i do that i keep all these commandments and then he said sell all your things give it to the poor and come follow me he saw freedom as following the rules, but when he had an opportunity to be complete self-gift in the way that Jesus was calling him, he was enslaved. He was mm-hmm. not truly free because he had these attachments to the things. And I think that that's really our call each and every day is 
to say, you know, how can I more fully live this freedom? What opportunities is God giving me to lay down my life for the sake of somebody else? And whether that's sitting and listening or, of course, in our prayer, looking at every encounter as an opportunity to die to self and to affirm and seek out the good in the other, that's true freedom lived out. I, I'm just too thinking about the Beatitudes because they are the foundation of Christian living and really what sets Christians apart um, for anyone else. And I think in that is blessed are the peacemakers, you know, blessed are the meek. And those kind of ideas, when we think of freedom, we don't think of that. We think, oh, I need to be power. It's what I can control and things like that. But I think again and again throughout the Gospels, what Christ lays out in words there, he really shows us indeed an example and just his interactions with others and how he treats himself and his relation to the Father. And so I think maybe starting from freedom from that point too of I mean it seems like a cop-out answer to say the gospels but the gospels it's if he is truth and that's where we should learn about him that's really interesting how you pointed out we do connect freedom with a sense of power and even if you look at the reason we're just specifically talking about this is it's July 5th and I think there can be a tendency to think of like the freedom that we have in the United States that freedom from tyranny that we can't look at that as a position of power. Like, we are free in this country to be better than others, or I don't know, in whatever sense. That freedom comes with a responsibility to choose the good Mm -hmm. in various situations. Yeah, I I mean, with any tools or gifts that we're giving, the more that we're given, the more is expected of us. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if we have the freedom to do the right thing, we are expected to do that. All right. Well, this was great. So thank you so much for both of you for joining us today and, and shed a little light on Theology of the Body. And I never even thought of the aspect of freedom fitting in with that. So, so thank you for sharing that with us. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Thank you. 